Uh, what's up, guys? I am uh, Trip. I play guitar and sing in Summer Wars. Um, the first song I'm going to play is actually our newest one. It's a single we put out back in uh, December. Uh, it's called uh, Fall Back Lover. Too much coffee, I don't want to calm down We'll listen to our old favorite records Convince myself we still have forever Explaining but I still feel young So soak it in, it won't go on and on A different kind of love, have you had enough? You're my default mood, I'm your fallback lover. I can never ignore all the habits I hard, I'm only yours. I'm only yours. The way your dress hangs off your frame It's the way you say my name but One kiss I'm permanent Will burn bright but still short lived I saw your passion, saw the passion fade Love you before each excuse you made I guess that you could say it's a little late You're my default mood, I'm your fallback lover. And I can never ignore all the habits die hard. I'm only yours. It's all fair game, it'll hurt just a little. I'll romanticize everywhere. I could, I could, I could, I could only be yours. I could, I could, I could, I could only be yours. I could, I could, I could, I could only be yours. I could, I could, I could, I could only be yours. I could, I could, I could. I could, 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 December, actually. December. Yeah. So two yeah. questions for you to start things off. One, is that mean there's a new album or music coming out soon? That, we are working on new music. That song was kind of just a single. I don't even think it'll necessarily go on whatever we put out next. It, we, it could get included, but um, we have a bunch of songs. We're kind of deciding whether we want it to be like, a really beefy longer EP or an actual full length. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is cracking. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't play a show for a year and a half because of COVID. Uh, but, but yeah, we're uh, still figuring that out. But hopefully, my I want to have a full release of some sort out by the end of the year for sure. So. And that second question trip, that's when, I, I mean, obviously it's acoustic, but when people listen to the original recording, it's a little different sounding than 
your first record. So was there a new inspiration or kind of a new sound you guys were wanting to take Summer Wars or was that one of a, a more of a one-off sounding single? Um it it's still kind of being decided that the new songs definitely have some of that new sound uh from Fallback Lover cuz um I knew I had been listening to some different bands, as you can probably tell from listening to that song, like it has a little bit of like 80s influence with the guitar effects and it's more electronic with the drums, at least in the first half of the song. So I was trying to make a song that still sounded like Summer Wars, but incorporated some influence of influences of bands that I had been listening to for a while, like uh, like the band Camino, like more pop rock type bands, like to kind of mix in with your more traditional pop punk. So that's kind of where that song came from but the new songs are definitely a mix of like older summer wars and that song for sure so uh with this is kind of like a i'm just gonna ask a question so like how do you guys mark your music how do you guys do like a good job of getting it out there and making sure it gets the attention it gets yeah it's there's a lot of different ways it's a mix of things. It's the biggest, the number one biggest thing that's helped us. And I think most bands understand this now is you have to, you have to use Spotify and get big on Spotify. Cause that's how everyone's listening to music now. So the number one thing that has helped us is getting on Spotify editorial playlists and stuff, which yeah. used to be way harder than it is now. It seems like it's easier before, like when we first started, when like 2016 2017 it used to be your manager or your label person had to really know the person putting together that playlist at spotify and there's still a lot of that that goes on behind the scenes that's just hard to really predict but um spotify now lets you submit your own songs so there it's a lot easier it's not easy but you know you have some direct control over how that works now so that's been the number one thing that has helped us get opportunities um but in terms of so, like other social media sites, like it's it's all over the place because it, you you're constantly trying to predict. Me and uh, Rich, Richie have been talking about that. Like you're trying to predict algorithms and like you know there's a new social media site every year, so that you have to like suddenly care about. <laughs> so it's it's hard. Um, you can like on Facebook and stuff. You can you can put sponsored ads out and stuff if you have the money, but you don't want to you know, waste too much money and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a, it's a mix of, of things, but the Spotify thing is probably the most important thing. Like once you get music out, like well recorded professional stuff, like you, you want to try to, to get on those Spotify playlists and whatever you can do to, to help do that. will will uh, keep you moving forward. But. All right, Trip. Next question came in from Will who's in here. And, uh, he wanted to hear a little bit more about the origin story of y'all, specifically how you got into music when you were a wee little kid. Wee little kid. So um, I feel like mine is pretty generic compared, like I feel like most pop punk bands are influenced by a lot of the same bands from the era of like Blink-182 and Newfound Glory, Sum 41. I came up around those, those years, like the early 2000s. Um, <clears throat> and basically that that's how it started for me i i was always a drummer first this is the first band that i've ever sang and played guitar in actually um growing up i always played drums and i you know i would play along the blink 182 albums and like you know for years that's all i did and then i kind of uh i actually met my first band at a, a church youth group uh which is funny thinking about now but that's that's how i kind of first got started um and we we were just a blink 182 and green day cover band for a few years and we slowly started to write our own songs that of course just were basically blink 182 covers anyways but uh but skipping ahead a few years to when i actually met these guys um i met brett and noah on craigslist actually because we I, i've been i've been playing drums in so many bands and i was like you know i, I want to have more direct control over the writing process and like I, I and a lot of the guys i had been playing music with for years loved playing music but i could tell they didn't want to take it quite as seriously as me and so i i just went onto the internet and you know i had to wade through a lot of responses from like 50 year old guys trying to play like country or like classic rock or whatever and then i finally got a message from from them saying you know we like all these same bands and we want to you know start a band with you and it actually worked out so it's that was like 2015 or 2016 i think um 
so so yeah that's kind of how this band formed um so yeah i mean i kind of skipped through a lot but basically it 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 took a long time to get to the point where i felt like i was in control of of the writing process and stuff i feel like i wish i would have started summer wars like am i frozen but yeah it uh I, I always say to myself, like, I wish I would have started Summer Wars like three or four years before I did. Like, I, cause I was, I had songs and I had these ideas and I, I, I think I took longer than what I wanted to get going with it. But, um, but I mean, it took a while to find the right guys and, you know, we've, we've been super committed ever since. So it's, uh, I don't know if the other guys have anything to add really, but yeah, we, we actually met on farmersonly.com. Farmers. <laughs> no, uh, Brett, the bass player me and him were in a band and we were just talking one night we wanted to make a real band we wanted to be a serious band because our old band was basically like trip was just a blink May two green day cover band and uh we got on craigslist and it's like looking for a guitarist and a bass player and i was like holy shit that's us let's see where this goes and here we are yeah it's funny we all kind of had our origins with craigslist i started looking on craigslist like Three years before I found you guys, I started playing in other bands, and um, <coughs> and same same kind of deal. They didn't have the same level of of seriousness about it, or um, you know, they just wanted to play shows on the weekends for their friends and family and stuff like that. But um, you know, that didn't work out. And then went back on Craigslist. I found an ad that I think Trip put out, looking for a drummer at the time, and um, and we just hit it off right away. It was funny though because the first time we actually met was like the day before our tour up in we we were going through Canada and um and yeah, all of the it was places. very last minute yeah it was so <laughs> last minute it was like <clears throat> our first I, time meeting each other and like playing the songs together was practically like on the stage for our first show it was just so by the off the cuff but it was like a great experience I had actually met Tyler though like probably a month before I went to a, a metal show in Asheville here and he was the drummer of it. And I just happened to walk into him. Oh, we actually didn't, yeah, we, we crossed paths, but we never like formally met. And then a month or two goes by and that metal band that I was playing in broke up. And by this time I was in Noah's band and, um, and we were like, Oh, I don't remember how it came up, but we we eventually were, we found out that we had already met before, and it was I think like that. Derek. Wild. Yeah. I'm talking about Derek, because he drummed on that one tour for us. Yeah. But um, yeah, the the links. It's kind of crazy how, like, Trip lives in Raleigh, me and Brett live in Asheville, and Tyler lives in Charlotte, and it's just <laughs> crazy to like have to go that far to find like dudes who want to be in a band and not just do it on the weekends like that really want to go out there tour sleep in a van full of farts like it's crazy <laughs> you have to be about that life i think i'm gonna play an older one actually um it, it's off the very first uh ep that we put out in, like late 2015 it's just fun to play, so I figured I'd play it. I'm not sure how many people know it, but you know, if you like it, you can go back, like scroll down our discography way back and check it out. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, this song is called Effortless. It's, oh shit, I, actually, this is kind of funny. This is literally, this might be the first song I ever wrote for Summer Wars. This was like, this was gonna be an acoustic song actually before I even made Summer Wars, but here we go. Oh my god, it's not a secret what it is you do to me. You pick me up to watch me fall, and you plan it carefully. If this love was a shot in the dark, thought you knew it too. And making something out of nothing is what we do. I spend most time making myself unwell, but I tend to feel much human 
When I'm not feeling human at all I can't if you can Let's find some common ground If this sinking ship can Always be turned around I remember every condescending word You screamed at me Remember every stupid fight It felt like your therapy your every miss call late at night I slip to my phone I wake up with a voicemail message With your sarcastic tone I spend most of my days this summer Convincing myself I'm well But I tend to feel less human When I'm not feeling human at all yeah, I give if you give but Let's find some common ground if this sinking ship can always be turned around But not one minute more I won't let this go no more I'll pick myself up the fucking floor I refuse to be ignored When you guys kind of think about what differentiates you guys from other bands, now that you're not just a Blink-182 Green Day cover band, what's uh, what's kind of your answer to make, like, what's Summer Wars versus <clears throat> other pop-punk bands? And obviously, Tyler and Noah, if you guys have other opinions on this, chime on in. Um, It's interesting. I like to think... I like to think that we combine somewhat of traditional pop punk sound with a more like atmospheric um like guitar effect heavy like lots like of delayed parts reverby guitars and stuff what was that Noah? like a stadium rock type thing like a loud oh, sort of yeah in some of our especially the newer stuff it has some of those aspects i think that's not to say we're the only band doing that in this genre, but like I, I think we incorporate it more than I would say most others. Um, and I try to, I try to be almost super literal with my lyrics and like almost like very. I, I don't use a lot of like really deep dark metaphors in my lyrics and stuff. I try to keep it pretty relatable. It, it, and the, these aren't even necessarily things that separate us. I guess I'm just describing like what my process is like. I, I try not to go like too metaphorical with my lyrics and stuff. So I, I try to keep it really down to earth and like relatable and just what my thoughts are in that moment. But that kind of answers the question a little bit. But. No one tell her, do you guys want to add anything or can I move on to the next one? No, I'm I'm with what you said. I mean, kind of the atmospheric sounds, like kind of the almost angel a, angels and airwaves kind of esque, um, just fat guitar tone and and stuff like that. And especially on some of the newer stuff. But um, we're still like you were like we were talking about earlier with the newer single we did. You know, we're still kind of finding a new sound and it's developing still. So you know, who yeah. knows where it's headed? We'll find out. The core is definitely pop punk, but I feel like we're trying to add all these elements of different genres into our band to make it i don't know i don't know <laughs> it's, it's so getting built uh, it's, yeah 
All right, one other question for you three that came in from Will again was, obviously you guys are in a pop punk band, but you're all fans of pop punk music as well. So <clears> name <throat> your top three pop punk alt rock bands you guys are into, or three to five in any order that you guys are into now or were or any, any way you want to take that question. Sure. Um, I'll go first. Uh, first is is still Blink-182. I don't care, you know, how generic of an answer that is. Like, I I grew up listening to them. That's probably one. Um, two, <clears throat> it's a band that doesn't get as much love these days, but they were pretty huge back in the day is The Starting Line. Um, I really love them. I think that their career got, like, cut too short. Like, they were on to something with their last couple full lengths. They were doing a, a really interesting sound, and I think they kind of got really screwed over by major labels. Uh, but... Yeah, they, they're a big inspiration in how I write my music, too. Um, so that's probably number two. Um, and yeah, I mean, Jimmy World's probably in the top five. Um, and and I think in, in, more in the newer way of bands that influenced me, like as I was starting this band, were definitely, you know, like the, your Knuckle Puck, Real Friends that that whole kind of crowd of bands like in like 2014 2015 when i was first starting this band they definitely influenced me too so it's i i think that's that's probably a good mix of older and newer bands i think that's like five if you want to go noah or tyler um yeah i mean i second what you said about jimmy world they're <laughs> kind of who put me on to pop punk um i think it was actually like a a, a video game um you know because i'm a gamer uh that, that <laughs> where i first Bro, heard um I think it was Sweetness by Jimmy World. It was on the soundtrack. Yeah. And I was like, that's nice. And um, and I just dove into their discography. I think I was like 10 years old. So that was probably the what introduced me to it. Um, and then, yeah, the second wave bands or like the fifth wave pop punk, whatever you call it. Um, Story So Far, they kind of, you know, I really love their sound. Um, that kind of got me into the newer stuff. And then Knuckle Puck after that. Um, actually just discovered knuckle puck not that long ago just right before i joined summer wars and i was like hmm i haven't heard a band that like they were on the cutting edge for me of just enough heaviness but still you know not too heavy and still pop punk i really love them yeah i agree dude yeah blink Lane two number one like good charlotte simple plan i was the dude wearing the big dicky shorts in high school <laughs> <laughs> that was my thing man uh as far as new def knuckle puck is definitely top um the new seaway album is amazing yeah i was gonna say if, if brett was here he would say seaway he loves seaway. stand atlantic dude i can't stop listening. oh yeah i can't stop listening to two um, members of the community and i were talking about how much pink elephant is like our favorite record right now so yeah. i cannot agree more Talk about a band like how we were saying we want to incorporate new elements. That album incorporated so many different weird things, but it still sounds awesome. I, I love that album. Uh, we got time for a few more questions before the final song, so I'm going to try this again. Let's open it up to the community and see if anybody else has it. You guys can ask him anything, by the way. Anything. Anything. It can even be like <laughs> dating advice or life <laughs> advice or oh God. Maybe how, to, that. How, to oh. Cook, how to cook dinner tonight. Who knows? Actually, yeah, I got a good question there. So I know in the last, um, well, first of all, love y'all's music. I what I really like, uh, I think Trip, you mentioned this that you kind of apply a more atmospheric element. That's what I really like about you guys. That's what I find different. That's your differentiator in my mind. So, just cool. awesome shit. Keep at it. Uh, but I always wondered this: how difficult is it to keep up a relationship on the road? Like if you you know spend however many months at a time on the road and just like you know doing what you do is that difficult to sustain or what do you find with that so that's interesting i i'm an interesting case for that because i'll i'll, I'll say something really quick and pass it to noah because that's he'll, he'll answer it better because he's actually married but what i all i have to say is uh my my girlfriend is actually uh our like prime photographer for the band so she has come on almost every tour that we've ever done so I have it pretty good in the fact that I get to see her and, you know, still tour. So I, and I haven't really had, I haven't dated anyone else while we we're on the road. So it, it's, I, I can't answer that super well, but Noah, how do you, how do you, uh, 
Well, actually, I know you. You text her like basically like every minute of every day while you're on tour. Yeah, FaceTiming all the time. Yeah. When I yeah when I'm on tour, I definitely make a point to at some at some point during the day like we'll FaceTime just because I'm not home. Um, other than that, yeah, we're we text pretty much all day. But hell, I we do that when we're at home. If I'm at work, like I don't know, we just always have something to talk about. Um, I guess I guess we're in love, dude. We're married, so we're just. <laughs> but uh, congrats, man. Um, awesome. I don't know. It's it's super easy between me and her and our bass player Brett. I mean, he's he's married to his high school sweetheart, and it's just I don't know. We're just texting them all day, and and it's not it's not like I'm like, oh god, I got to make sure I text her back. It's I don't know. It's just like a casual. I miss her, so I'm going to text her and make a point to FaceTime or talk to her on the phone. And very sweet. Yeah. Very. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's easy for me. <clears throat> I don't know. Tyler, you sound, you sound like a loyal dude, man. Right on. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I have nothing to add here. I've been. I'm always single. I've been single <laughs> on every tour, every all the time. So <laughs> no experience with that, unfortunately. Trip, you're not alone with uh I've learned the girlfriend is the photographer or boyfriend is the photographer is like the secret. It happened over like a pretty long amount of time. It it was I mean, we did meet at a show and she was taking pictures of the band, so it 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 kinda just it took a few years, but yeah, I mean we've it's best relationship I've ever been in. It's like it's like Noah said, it's like super easy. It's it's nothing feels like work. This is kinda turning into like the relationship podcast right now, but <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it definitely is a pro tip. It makes it easier for sure. Right. I'll tell you guys this. No one else has been asked about relationship advice. So whatever it is with Summer Wars, you guys are being trusted with the most intimate <laughs> well, moments I mean, of the community like right now. 90% of our songs are about that. So. <laughs> so there's a reason you asked the question. What, what's your issues, my man? <laughs> oh, well, honestly, man, the, well, when Richie brought up relationship advice, I'm text, I've been texting this girl for a little over a month and a half now, and she lives out in Scottsdale, but I'm planning on moving out west in a year or two. So, you know, we've just been talking about relationships and stuff like that, and she's really cool. So I figured, you know, if you guys have spent time out on the road or doing anything distance related, um, I would trust your perspectives. So I figured I, I would ask. Yeah, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah. And John Core is one of our members, funny enough, not in a band. And John, have you ever played an instrument even or no? I was trying to remember. No, uh, I tried playing guitar when I graduated from college, but I just couldn't, you know, I wasn't really into it. But that's when I kind of started singing a little bit more and doing a little more with uncleans and um, screams and shit like that. So that's the farthest extent that I go. But other than that, I'm all, you know me, I'm all claymation. So there you go, guys. Trip, Noah, Tyler, that's how much he trusts you guys with his dating life. He's not even a musician. He's asking how to go. So no pressure if the relationship goes south now. <laughs> I, I got another responsibility. I got another one from Will, and then I want to open up to somebody else. But Will was asking, um, what kind of advice would you guys give to any other creatives? You know, we have a lot of members of our community that are not just musicians, they're videographers, claymation animators, as John is, uh, photographers, etc. You know, obviously the creative spirit is a unique one. So as, you know, cre creative people that are pursuing their passion right now, what advice would you give to younger creatives aspiring to <laughs> I guess make it their profession. Well, if you if you want to DM me a further like subreddit there or sub follow up, do that. But uh, we'll start with just creative advice. And if he DMs me, I'll ask a follow up question there. Well, I would say just think about what value you can bring to the table for other people, and make sure you know you're meeting as many people as possible who can do the same in return. Um, and it's an exchange of you know what you can offer them, what they can offer you, and and that's what it's all about. It's networking meeting people and uh and sharing what you've worked on what you're passionate about yeah that's that's all that's a very good point networking and meeting people um i would say the thing that's helped me a lot with songwriting is no matter what like 
I, I don't always stick to this, but I really try to like sit down with a guitar at least once a day. Like e even if you're not feeling creative, sometimes just sitting down doing whatever you're doing, if you're painting, if you're, you know, what, whatever your craft is, like if you're doing it once a day, no matter, even if you're not in the mood for it or whatever, sometimes just putting yourself in the position, you'll have that spark. And that's what's helped me so many days when I thought I wasn't going to be productive. I sit down with an acoustic guitar and something just pops out that ends up being really cool or whatever. And it can lead to some awesome things. Um, but that you also, you don't want to get burnt out either. Like you, you do need to give yourself room to, to breathe and to come back and feel really creative. Um, the the other thing is i i drink a ton of coffee i i am addicted to caffeine and i feel like i can't write music without it anymore so that that's one route you could go is drink a bunch of coffee um i'm trying to think of anything else no if you if you have anything you want to add i mean you just gotta go for it i mean there's been so many times in this band or doing other things that i love where you're just I think your anxiety and your fear of like, what if it doesn't work out? What if, you know, we don't get what we want? You just got to push through it. You got to go for it. I mean, dream big, but even if you don't hit those, like just still be happy for what you got, what you've done. Um, yeah, just put yourself out there and do it, really. If yeah, and envisioning yourself where you want to be is important too. I always talk about the, the quote, fake it till you make it. Not that you should necessarily fake anything. Um, you should be authentic, but you should also envision yourself as having already made it. And what would you do if you had already made it? You know, so like think about the bigger picture of what you're doing. It's important. All right. So adding on to this, Will did send me a follow up question. He said he I didn't realize this. So he's 22. So he was saying specifically when you're looking at a college, do you like internships or just jump into collaboration more for a creative? Do you kind of go for the mentor? Let me ask it this way because I actually think this is an interesting question. Do you guys fall more into the mentorship realm or do you go right for the creative collaboration partnership realm? Where would you go first? Interesting. Straight straight out of school? Yeah, let's say you're 22 straight out of college. Do you learn from somebody who's a master of their craft first or do you find – like a family of creatives, what would you do first? Mm. That's interesting. Um, I'm, a, I'm a physical learner, so I I would probably go the mentor route because if I don't know how to do something, then they can show me. But then once I learn it, maybe I can tweak it to how I like to do it, make it my own. Yeah, the other thing with that is the more you just try it, even if you're not that experienced in it, you try it, and even if you fail, you learn from your mistakes and you make a better product next time. So I think that just putting stuff out there, even if it's not perfect, you don't have to you know, stress the details. It's important to just put content or stuff out there. So I would go the latter route rather. Well, they're both important. You know, Having a mentor is also very important. So you know, a combination of both, I would say. I was asking the question. I know it's a challenging question. I was, I was now, that's why I tweaked it. I was like, it's fun to see kind of what order you'd put. Cause no, I like how you answered that trip. Do you have anything? What would you, what would you do first? Now that you couldn't do both. I know Tyler kind of copped out at the end with that answer. Cause it is important to do both. But I, if you had to pick one to start. See it with hindsight, I would say, take the more slow, steady route with the mentor but I know when I was 22, I, I didn't go directly to college or anything, but I know when I was 22, I felt like I had to get what I wanted to do done right then, right in that moment, which isn't always the best mindset to have because when you're 22, a lot of it's because society tells you, you know, like if you're not successful by 25 or 30 or whatever, like then you're worthless or you like you like you need to get a normal job or do whatever the hell. But you and I think that's contributed to why I was like, go, go, go mentality like that. But in in hindsight, I would say, you know, take the slower, steadier route, like hone your craft, that, that type of, that type of thing. So final, I got a final question, final question before this song. And I know we, we got to wrap this up, but okay. for all of you guys, what is in like a sentence or two success look like, which is kind of the stumper question I like to always ask at the end of the docs I do, but what does success look like for each of you? And you can answer that. 
however you want. Um, for me, yeah, it's when I was younger, growing up as a teenager, you know, you want to be the, the biggest band in the world. And of course that would still be amazing. But, you know, as you get older, you realize the, the way the music industry works, like isn't always fair. So you kind of move the goalposts a little bit every, every so often. But for me, success with this band would be being my primary income income source to where I could just live off of it. You know, that's to me, if I could sustain my way of life and, you know, the people around me, um, my family and stuff, that would be awesome. That, and that's probably the simplest answer, but, um, in the creative sense, I just want to put out the best music I possibly can. And that's success to me because when I was younger, if I listened to the music now that I made, I would, I would be, I'd be freaking out because th this, these songs that I've made are like stuff I've dreamed of making, you know, like when you're young, you want to make these like awesome professional sounding songs. And like, now I did it. So in that sense, I'm successful. So, you know, it, you can, there's two ways to look at it, but. Yeah. It's like Tripp said, the goalposts move, you know, it, and as time goes on 10 years ago, I would, I would have never dreamed of playing some of the shows I've played and et cetera. So like, I feel like I've already had success, but like Tripp said, you, you guys know how hard it is to work a nine to five, I'm sure, or like your regular day job and then try to foster your, your side hustle or your passion on the side. There's sometimes it feels like there's not enough time in the day or you're just too tired. And um, so ultimately the goal would be to be able to make a living doing your, your art or your passion. Um, so for me, currently that's kind of a, um, a measure of success that I'm trying to reach is trying to have this be my main focus. But I can't do that, and I can't pay my bills and my rent uh, if I'm not if that's not sustainable. So, you know, it's the goalposts move, and it, they'll always be shifting. My my image of su success will never be the same thing two years in a row. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much on the same same thing they're saying. Um, dude, my goal was to play Warp Tour. We got to play Warp Tour, so like, I'm I'm. I could retire. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> no, yeah. E End of an era getting on the the compilation for Warp Tour that year was probably one of the moments where like we were hundred percent the smallest band on that compilation, but I didn't give a shit. I was like, this okay, you know, if we call it quits, that'll be fine. <laughs> like Yeah. Really, I, it's good. Yeah. I feel like when you start a band, like your success comes in levels. You're like I'm going to make a band. Oh, let's play a show. We did it. That's successful. You know, it'd be cool if we could like play with like a, a big band that comes through town and then do that. And then, well, maybe we could go on a tour or something. And then you, maybe you do a DIY one. And I, I don't know, I guess when you, what I'm trying to say, like you want to go on tour with like huge bands, but when you start a band, if you're like, pretty down to earth you're like you put your goals in like a box and you're like okay these are probably doable and then all of a sudden you get one you get an email and it's like you guys want to play warp tour and then you kind of come out of that box of what successful is to you and you move on to the next level and you're like holy shit playing warp tour that's insane getting to see knuckle puck and real friends backstage play in front of me and the drummer ruined my eardrums it's great cool so I think it just comes in levels. This is End of an Era. Um, probably by far our biggest song. It'll probably always be our biggest song, and I'll live in the shadow of this song for the rest of my life. Um, which is fine. I, I love the song. I'm, I'm not like one of those bands, they, like, they hate their, their biggest song or whatever, don't want to play it. Uh, but yeah, this is End of an Era. And thanks for hanging out with us. Like, this has been awesome. I, I definitely want to come back and uh, hang out with you guys again. So thank you for having us. Trip, you guys are always welcome back. <laughs> yeah. The sun trash and bleach blonde hair. The adolescent vacant stare A mind piece of the mind I hear the thoughts swimming in my head Impulse decisions 
The late nights in love If for God conclusions Tell me what you're thinking of It's just like me No simple love, it's wishful thinking. You and I, it felt like dreaming. But you left me out to dry. Been living all the time. I can't even wait. I'll just bring you in. It's the end of an era. It's a Do I miss you when I have nothing else? Can I win when I'm missing myself? Was what we had even real? And so I keep looking back And I refuse to believe that It's the end of an era It's a fall from place You said you needed time You said you needed space you can leave if you wanna So I won't take my place So in the meantime Can we fade away? Can we fade away? I'll just breathe you in Thank you All right, everyone. Awesome. That was Summer Wars, ending things with End of an Era. Obviously, go check out their stuff on Spotify. Spread some love to them on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, whatever the future social media channel is. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> uh, obviously, Trip, Noah, and Tyler, thank you guys so much for all three of you dropping in. Uh, obviously, when new music comes out, you guys are all welcome back. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Thanks. No. Seriously, thank you for having us. This is awesome. This is like the coolest thing we've done in a while. Like being able to, especially with COVID the past year, we still haven't played a live show since 2020. So playing in front of you guys and hanging out has been really, really cool. So thank you for having us.